It wasn't too long ago that Porsche's entry into Formula One through a Red Bull partnership seemed all but certain. But in Formula One, nothing is for sure until it's cemented in writing. And it turns out that the two partners had radically different visions for the team's future. So what went wrong? And are there any other options in Formula One for the manufacturer? Plus, how does Christian Horner plan to inflict pain on Toto Wolff? Stay tuned for all of that and more F1 news coming right up. Playing Hardball there has never been a better time to move into Formula One. A recent surge in popularity, thanks to Liberty Media's takeover and a successful Netflix documentary, has led to massive audiences, and market research has estimated that each Grand Prix generates around $230 million. So, if you're a car brand that's been waiting to move into the industry, now is your time. That's exactly what Porsche and Audi have been doing. Both of the car manufacturers are owned by the Volkswagen Group, and they had been waiting for the green light on the 2026 engine regulations to partner up with existing teams. Audi announced earlier this year that they'll be replacing Alfa Romeo underneath the backing of Sauber, while Porsche had been linked to a Red Bull mega deal for months. But as negotiations dragged on, it became clear that Red Bull were playing hardball. Team principal Christian Horner said that any partnership must fit with the team's DNA and that there were plenty of things they were not willing to compromise. Red Bull knows that they have had success by being bold, experimental, and retaining full control. On the other hand, Porsche wanted to share leadership responsibilities, and there were even talks of the German manufacturers cleaning house and firing top executives like Horner and Helmut Marko after a takeover. These two visions were not compatible, and now, Porsche has released an official statement confirming that a partnership based on equal footing was not on offer, so the negotiations have come to an end. Red Bull is in it for the long game. Looking back, it feels a little naive of Porsche to think that they could muscle their way into Red Bull. Not only have Red Bull been a fiercely independent constructor since joining F1 in 2005, but their long-term plans are all based on maintaining complete control. That's why the team set up Red Bull powertrains which is a power unit manufacturer slowly taking over the operations at Honda. If that wasn't enough, they've poached around 50 staff members from the Mercedes engine department, including six senior employees. They're building their own engine department to go with their chassis development so that they're on equal footing with teams like Ferrari and Mercedes. And with a cost cap of 140 million, that will only drop in years to come. Red Bull are setting themselves up for a cost-saving operation by manufacturing in-house. When Red Bull joined the sport in 2005, it was hard to imagine the amount of success they would go on to achieve. By 2009, their driver finished second in the championship, and the following year was four back-to-back -back world championships delivered by Sebastian Vettel. 2022 looks to be Red Bull ushering in another dominant period and the beginning of Max Verstappen's time at the top. So, if Porsche wanted to join the party, they would have to bring a lot to the table. Porsche were offering some engine expertise and resources, but clearly at the end of the day, it wasn't enough. Marco says that Red Bull are in the driver's seat. Helmut Marco has backed up what Christian Horner has said about Porsche and Red Bull having a different DNA. And he even went further to claim that his team don't need anyone. Helmut Marco has been involved with Red Bull since before they even had a Formula One team. When the drinks manufacturer was still a part owner of the Sauber F1 team, Helmut Marco pioneered the Red Bull Junior team that has gone on to produce talents like Sebastian Vettel, Max Verstappen, and Daniel Ricciardo. And their recent success has given Marco confidence in their project. He revealed that in the negotiations with Porsche, he wanted to make sure that they would have the same amount of success they had over the last 12 years. He said, we're in a good position. We have the fastest driver until 2028. We have Adrian Newey, the best designer, and we have an engine factory. We are completely self-sufficient. Even Lewis Hamilton has walked back some of the statements he has made about Red Bull over the years. Hamilton called them a fizzy drinks company in the past, but recently admitted that they have proved him wrong. Unlike smaller teams, Red Bull is putting themselves into a similar position to Ferrari, where there is a very low risk of them being bought out. Dietrich Mataschitz, owner of Red Bull, created the team because of his passion for motorsport. And with Red Bull raking in an annual revenue of 5 billion euro, it's hard to see them in a weak position anytime soon. Up next, why does Horner want to inflict pain on Mercedes? And what's plan B for Porsche after Red Bull's deal collapsed? So don't go anywhere. Horner has no sympathy for Wolf. If this year's performance is anything to go by, Red Bull could be as dominant as Mercedes were for the last seven seasons. Christian Horner isn't quite so sure, but he doesn't plan to hold any punches from his former rival Toto Wolf. Mercedes are in big trouble. 
They've dropped out of the championship race and are third in the constructors' standings. Their F1W13 has been the biggest victim of this year's porpoising effect and seriously slowed down development of their car. Thanks to very consistent results by both George Russell and Lewis Hamilton, they're only 35 points behind Ferrari, but Ferrari's performance this season has been disastrous. After so many years of chasing after Mercedes, Christian Horner is happy to be performing at such a higher level than their rivals. While he thinks that Mercedes are getting back on their feet, his dream is to emulate their success. He said, I can only wish to inflict that amount of pain on Toto over the next eight years. Well, judging by Toto Wolff's frustration and disappointment this season, there are only seven years to go, powering the whole sport. Meanwhile, over at the Audi offices, things are going much more smoothly. Last month, Audi made the official announcement that they would be entering F1 as a power unit manufacturer in 2026. So, why are engine manufacturers choosing 2026 to join? And what's so different about those regulations? Well, as you might expect, Formula One engines are extremely complicated units. Gone are the days when they are purely mechanical. Now, they work in a hybrid composition to use electrical energy too. When the turbo hybrid regulations were first introduced in 2014, it was Mercedes who took full advantage. In fact, they were so far ahead that Toto Wolff had to pull in the reins to stop F1 from changing the rules again. Former Mercedes executive director Patty Lowe revealed that in 2014, there were times when he was ordered to turn the engine power down so that the team wouldn't win by too much. That's right, turning it down. So it turns out that the Mercedes party mode was real. But all of that research and development wasn't cheap. Mercedes spent half a billion dollars to win that year's championship and just as much to keep the machine running. But 2026 is designed to change all that. One of the most expensive components of the power unit, the MGUH, is set to be removed. This will simplify the designs, direct engineers to more sustainable designs, and most importantly for Porsche and Audi, bring costs down. So, once those plans were confirmed, it was a clear path for Volkswagen to give the go-ahead to both manufacturers. Is there a plan B for Porsche? If you're hoping to see Porsche's name in Formula One in the future though, not all hope is lost. Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff thinks that the Red Bull rejection is not the end of the road for them. So, why is he so interested in Porsche joining the sport? Toto Wolff knows a lot about F1 ownership. He's not just the head of the Mercedes F1 team, he's also a part owner. He moved into the team when he purchased 30% of Mercedes-Benz Grand Prix Limited in 2013. As we all know, over the next eight years, the team won eight Constructors' Championships and seven Drivers' Championships. And Wolf is pretty excited about the prospect of Porsche in Formula One. He said that Porsche would be a great addition to the grid and that they need to assess their other options. And Porsche appears to agree. After the collapse of the Red Bull deal, the manufacturer said that Formula One still remains an attractive environment. So, who could they partner up with? When you get rid of constructor suppliers like Ferrari, Mercedes, and Renault, you're left with Williams, Haas, and Aston Martin. Williams have a strong connection to Mercedes, and the same goes for Haas with Ferrari. But Aston Martin could be a possible contender. Under Lawrence Stroll, the team has undergone huge changes and is looking to bounce back from its terrible form last year. Could Porsche be the way to achieve that? Do you think that Red Bull needs to partner with anyone? And which constructor would you like to see join forces with Porsche? Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.